हाई एवरी वन एंड वेलकम बैक टू द मल्टीबर्ट ऑफ हंड्रेड प्लस डेटा साइंस प्रोजेक्ट सीरीज इस वीडियो में हम देखेंगे कैसे एक लाख से दो लाख कमा सकते हैं एक उस दिन में आपका पैसा हो जाएगा डबल रुके इट्स जस्ट ए फ्रॉड ऐसा नहीं होता एंड इन दिस वीडियो ट्रेंड मेकिंग वन प्रोजेक्ट बेस्ड ऑन ऑनलाइन पेमेंट फ्रॉड डिटेक्शन यूजिंग पाइथन एंड दिस वीडियो इज कॉम्बिनेशन ऑफ द हिंदी एंड इंग्लिश बट मोस्ट ऑफ द टाइम आई एम ट्राइड यूज द इंग्लिश वर्ड सो बिना किसी देर के हर हर महादबल के स्टार्ट करते हैं डिटेल So in order to building the online payment fraud detection, we're going to collect the data from the Kaggle, and this is our data set that's called the online payment fraud detections. And you can see here the online fraud dot csv one csv file, I mean comma separated value file. And using this data set, we're going to building one fraud detection model and try to classify that if the transaction is a fraud or not. And inside this data set, it having the eleven uh, columns, and which uh, it have eleven columns actually. So This each of the column have some different significant like it have the steps, the types of transaction, the amount, the new ORIC. I mean, customer starting the transactions, the balance before. You just need to read to read about this data set. What actually happening here? Now using this data set, we are going to building one machine learning model which can classify the payment transaction is fraud or not. So right now I am in my Jupyter notebook. You can also use the Google Colab or the BS Code or Python itself. And I already download the data set from the Kaggle, and I name it data set dot csv, and I already do the coding part here. And make sure you data set dot csv file in the same working directory folder. So if I go on here, uh, okay, not here, just click on here and control tab so that you can actually uh, switch your tab on your browsers. So you can see here data set dot csv file in my working directory and my ipynb file. I mean Jupyter notebook file, right? So now what I'm gonna do? I am simply going to import some necessary library. And try to explain the code. What actually happening inside this code, and how can you build one machine learning model? So first thing first, we're going to import here the pandas as pd. Then we're going to import here the numpy as np. So pandas actually help you to do some uh, data analysis tasks and also try to load the data from the different data sources. And also, I also make the videos regarding pandas that how can you deal with the uh, CSV file, how can you deal with the HTML file, how can you deal with the textual file, all of them, right? Then we have the NumPy as NP. So NumPy is actually help you to uh, deal with your multi-dimensional array because uh, in your data set is nothing but on multi-dimensional tax of data frame. So that's why you have to deal with your data. Then what I can do is simply using here data dot head so that it can load the data from our data data sources. I mean my data set it, and after that it will show the first uh, uh, columns of uh, not first column first row of our data set. So this data set is quite big. I think it's nothing but. Uh, More than a four nine four MB, so quite big data set. So it will take few times to loading that, right? So you can see it having the column that's called the step, the types, the amount, the new origin, old balance, the new balance, the name of destinations, how it is coming from, the old balance destinations, the new balance destination. Then it having column that's called the is fraud, right? Is fraud. So that means this is one supervised learning machine learning supervised machine learning problem because our label is given. And another thing is, this is nothing but a binary classification problem. Is fraud or not fraud? I mean, two classes, zero and one. That means this is one binary classification tax problem. And this is also a supervised machine learning based problem. Fine, okay. Now we see that this is one classification tax. So that we need to apply some machine learning algorithm which one work on classifications, right? Then what we can do? We can checking for the null value. So, is there any null value or not in our data set? And so we see that there is no null value. If there is a null value, we need to also handle them. It is also called a missing value, right? So, we need to handle it. But in this case, we don't need to handle it. This is the beginner types of project that I am going to show it, right? Then after that, we go to the deeper and the deeper in the series. We discuss about the intermediate and also advanced series, like how can you build one plus for learning model from the scars, like BU16, AlexNet, the GANs. Okay, all of them we will discuss about that. Right? Don't worry on that. Just follow the series. Then what I can do, you can try to check that how many types of transaction actually happening here. If I go on try to trap the type of that, I mean type is here. It's nothing but a transaction type. So transaction type is cash out. You can cash out meaning you can uh, to money le sak money le sakte ho upper. It's called payment. Kita payment hai apka pas cash in. Cash in means tum kisi ko bech sakte ho. Kitna beza? It's called the transfer. You can also do the transfer, right? Then you have the debit. Right, so it have one, two, three, four, five. It have five types of five types of transactions type. Right, then what you can do is simply going to create and float that which which one is very uh, which kind of transaction is happening most. Right, so this is nothing but distribution of the 
transaction type. So we have the five types of transaction called cash out, the payment, the cash in, and the transfer, and the debit. That is all happening in the banking. Like in Bangladesh, it's uh, it's Bangladesh, uh, the Bikash, the Nagot, the, the Rocket, and all of the mobile banking also fall in this kind of way: cash out, payment, cash in, transfer, and the debit. In India, it having the Google Pay, having the PayPal, or or I don't know what actually happening, what actually available inside the India, right? So PayPal, the PayPal or the Google Pay or UPay, maybe it's happening, right? In India also. So you see that the cash out is cash out is nothing but 35.2%. 35.2%. That's mean cash out is happening quietly a big amount of okay. And it have the level of the payment. Payment is nothing but 33.8%. And you can see level is cash in. And this one so let's understand the also code also how actually what actually how can actually do it out so you can see here using the plotly so plotly is also the types of graphing uh, visualization library in python just like the matplotlib or the seaborn but it looks very great the ui is looks great and you can see here you can also download it at a png and you can also produce it plotly it just directly go to their website okay so what I can do, we can create here one type and the value counts. And after that, we're going to tagging the transaction type and the quantity. So index is actually help you to getting this name. That's called the cash out, the payment, the cash in, the transfer and the debit. Then this quantity is actually help you to getting the value, right? So when we have the transaction, the quality, let's assume that transaction is nothing but the X column and quality is nothing but the Y column, right? Now you can pass the data, full data full data and we have the values called the quantity I mean this quantity and names is nothing but transactions names mean the x axis you can say the x and values is nothing but my value so transaction should be uh, transaction transaction should be one names it can be in string and quantity it should be the continuous number right so then we can give here the title and also holes holes is 0.5 percent I mean these holes right you can also change it based on your requirement that I'm going to using here the figure dot show so using here the px.py, it show you, it's actually help you to uh, float the pie chart on your Jupyter notebook. You can also use the Seaborn itself. Don't worry on that, right? Then we're going to check in for the correlation and I mean uh, correlation of the data. So you can see the print the correlation of the float short value. So is float, we actually related these, related these uh, checking the correlation based on my target value. It's called the target correlation, right? Target correlation, you can see here. Uh, target correlation I mean based on the target how many data are correlated to each other so that we can we can remove some uh, we can some remove some uh, we can remove some column from from our data set it's called the feature engineering or you can say the feature selections not feature feature selections so you can see here is fraud is highly correlated because it's uh, it's it's the same the amount have also the positive correlation the is flag fraud is also having some positive correlation a step also have the old balance and the new balance but the old balance destination and the new balance origin is negatively correlated is negatively correlated so what you can do you can simply going to drop this out you can simply going to drop this out because this is uh, it's, it's it's negatively correlated right so what you can do we can also uh, actually negatively correlated so you can actually drop in this out right if it is highly correlated you can also drop this out because uh, same features same features, right? Okay, so that's it how you can actually do the feature selection. So we can actually remove this old balance destinations and also the new balance origin. Okay, fine. Now what I can do, we can simply going to uh, convert this into one hood encoding. I mean, we have the payment, uh, the uh, cash in, the transfer and the debit, which one is the categorical features, which one is the categorical features. So you need to convert them into the numerical, into the numerical. But if you are using uh, the pd.gat dummies, I mean the dummies to the data it will give you some random number of value random number of value maybe it will give you the cash out should be the three the cash in should be the four, uh, one like that otherwise you can also do the mapping part so mapping is quite big when you have the multiple number of uh, classes so you can see one two three four five so five classes so that's when you can do the mapping part otherwise you can use the pd dot dummies or you can also use the label encoder to do the level encoding but my my request is when you have the more than two number of classes better you can use the mapping you can use the mapping so now we're going to mapping the type because type is nothing but one uh, categorical features then data dot type and using the dot map and cash out equal to one payment should be the two cash in should be three transfer equal to four and debit equal to five 
then same things again for the fraud see for same thing as the fraud fraud you can see is fraud zero zero one so let's make it zero should be the no no fraud and one should be the fraud you can also using here the pd dot get dummies or using the label encoder but when you try to using the pd dot get dummies so it will actually creating some extra column for that so you know to replace it so that's why it's better you can using here this map use use map so i actually explaining all these things in details in my a data analysis course also in very details right in very details so i'm going to run it here so now you can see here my type is converted into the numerical below now it's time to splitting our data and try to select some features on that so for that you can be using here from sklearn.model selection we're going to importing here the train test and split and you're going to selecting here the uh, step is not necessary here step is necessary i mean, I mean how many transactions actually happening here it's just not necessary one in one hour right it's not necessary i user can also transact amount in a one hour two transaction can be happen that's not necessary but a type is type is important is it cash in or the cash out or the transfer is important that's why type here you're taking the type as my features then we have the amount then also have the new origin new origin you can see this is not my categorical value so this is not re, this is not required but if i go on here if i go on here you can see here this name origin name origin is not available here because this is one categorical features so we don't need the categorical feature here because this is don't don't have any significant this don't have any significant now you can see old balance origins if you say old balance destinations is negatively correlated but the old balance origin is highly correlated that's when we're taking this one then you have the new no new balance origin if i see here new balance origin is also uh also actually uh negatively correlated but the problem is when you are selecting the old balance origins you can also select the new balance origin to the data but it's it you can also drop it out but it, it's nothing but a numerical column so you need to take it but name destination is a category column you don't need to do it and old balance destination new balance destination, you can also take it you can also take it because this is the correlated it is correlated you can also take it but for the simply process i am not going to take it here you can also take it you can also give here the uh the old bill destinations the new bill destination but i think all the most of the below are actually containing of the zero so that's why i drop it out but this is correlated this is correlated okay this is how you actually select your uh, features uh, it is based on your mind that how the data is correlated so when you're doing this thing again and again then you can just see that which one is important which one is important but one more thing here don't select the categorical types of below categorical types of below which one is not significant right but how it go deeper we also discuss about the feature selections and on the feature engineering part so then we deep, go to deeper now you're going to for the beginner purpose let's select this one type the amount the old balance and also is fraud i'm simply going to run it here then what i can do because this is a classification tag so what i can do we, we need to select some classification types of classifier so for that you're using here the decision tree classifier you can using here any of the classifier random first classifier or the sbc you can do that it's your it's your <laughs> homework right so then we're going to be using here x train x test y train y test and using here train to split and passing here x and y and test test give here the 0.2 and random state is for 42 it's, you can also give it random state or not whatever else you can also give it here and test test you can also make it 0.2 percent right let's say if i try to make it 0.2 percent you can also do that then what you can do you can simply going to uh, create a classifier of the decision tree and after that you can do the fit and simply checking for the model score simple right okay then after that what you can do we are going to do checking for the predictions that our model is uh predicted with the data it's completely new data and checking for this is this a fraud i mean this is the online payment production is a fraud or not so it will take few seconds or few minutes to actually uh training this model because this is quite big data quite big data so let's sum up it out first what you can do is simply going to load our data checking for the missing value checking for the transaction type and checking for the distribution of the data which one is good this is nothing but the data uh, think about the data and see the distribution of the data then we are checking for the correlation and checking for which uh, features is important and then you're going to mapping our data i mean convert our categorical feature into the numerical and for same as the same as the target column also then we're going to split our data into the uh, into the train test and split and get we actually taking our features columns at the x independent feature and dependent feature i mean target for 
target is nothing but the is fraud then what i can do you can do, uh, import here the deficiency classifier and split our data into the 80 percent to 20 percent and create a model and after they fit that and checking for the score and we got here 99 percent accuracy if you try to checking for the transactions and this is a fraud transaction this is one fraud transaction okay so this is how the online payment fraud detection actually work and how can you building one machine learning model you can also create on pipeline create on pipeline and how can you create a pipeline with and how can you do the assembling we'll discussing on the later on when you go to the deeper of the data deeper of the data it just having the 27 lines of code but when i go for the advanced and the intermediate level project then you're going to be discussing about more lines of code right oh and you need to do all the necessary things like data visualization missing value handling categorical features all of the things right advanced things so that's it for today now hope you enjoyed this video and make sure to subscribe to the channels and don't forget to hit the bell icon and i'll be back with the tutorial and till then take care but one more thing share with your friends share with your family and it's possible share with your boyfriend or girlfriend and thank you and bye bye